Okay, hi everyone. Today I'm gonna to be talking about using the Photo Pulls app. I've been getting a lot of requests lately about how to use the app um, correctly when planning your astrophotography mission. And I thought this is the right time to do it as in the Southern Hemisphere, yeah, we're heading into our astrophotography season, which is basically from the end of March all the way to the beginning of October. And we get beautiful Milky Way across our skies. And I will say that we have some of the best skies in the world here in Southern Africa. So if you're into astrophotography, this is the place to come and shoot. So I'm focusing on the PhotoPulls app because this is the app that I use uh, when I go and plan. There are other apps that are freely available that do something very similar to PhotoPulls app and you're free to use those as well. No issues there. I'm just showing you on PhotoPulls because this is what I use. I think it is good value. You pay a once off subscription and you have it for life with all the updates, tells you about comets and eclipses and all those things. Um, it has a lot um, of software packed in there with different calculators to work out depth of field and settings and exposure and everything for astrophotography. I don't use a lot, I, use, I don't even use 90% of the stuff they give you. What I'm going to be focusing on in this video is showing you how I use PhotoPulls very simply, very basically, but it allows me to plan initially before I get to the scene and allows me to plan very accurately once I'm on location exactly what time the Milky Way and the stars are going to be in the correct location for my foreground and I can then plan multiple shots for the evening and work my way through different time points to different compositions and maximize the images that I'm gonna get in one night shooting. And this is very important because quite often you're gonna go shoot astrophotography. It's far away from the city, far away from where you're staying. So you've obviously spent money, you've booked accommodation, you've planned to go there over new moon. So, you want to try and maximize the content you can create in this time period you have. You might also be traveling in a different country and this might be the one time you have to shoot the Milky Way at this location. So you want to be able to plan very accurately and get the shots that you want. For me, astrophotography is mainly about planning. 80% of the work for me is in the pre-planning, finding the location, making sure I'm in the right spot, planning the composition exactly, what focal length, what settings I'm gonna be using, what techniques I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna do a blended shot, I'm gonna do a single image star trail, all of that before I go out and shoot in the evening. And this is very important because once you're out there at 2, 3 a.m. in the morning, your brain might not be firing on 100% accuracy. So you don't wanna be thinking and calculating and trying to find a composition in the dark. You wanna have done all of that planning, all of that thought process beforehand. All you wanna do at night is basically go to the spot that you found, you marked it with a rock or a X in the sand, set up your camera, put the settings on, focus, and then shoot. You don't wanna be thinking about composition and which way is the Milky Way facing and things like that in the middle of the night because then you start to make mistakes you start to miss shots you start to forget things so if you can do most of your planning beforehand that is very very important so firstly when you open the photo pulls app you'll see there's a few different sections you can choose from for me the moon is the one I use initially and this gives you the most information about what's happening at your night in your night shoot it tells you what time sunset is, what time sunrise is, it tells you what time the Milky Way core is visible and what time it, it sets. It tells you what time the moon rises and the moon sets. So there's a lot of valuable information in this little graph, in this linear graph, and I really like the way that PhotoPulls has set this out. It gives me a very good snapshot of what's happening on the evening without having to think too much about it. And this is great because you can look at future dates. So I'll say I'm traveling next month for new moon. I will go to the dates I'm going to be away in the app um, under the moon section. And then I can quickly see what time the sunset is, what time the Milky Way is visible from. And that gives me a good idea of how long my shooting window is from. Say the moon's going to set at, at 1 a.m. I know I can then shoot from 1 a.m. till 3, 4 a.m. in the morning. I have a 3, 4 hour shooting window. For that particular date and this allows me to quickly have a snapshot of when I can shoot and when's the best time to go to the location. So once you've used the moon to give you a good idea 
of what the moon is doing and when the Milky Way will be up, then I go back and I go to the planner. The planner is the most effective way to plan, obviously, because it's called the planner. Um, <clears throat> but under the planner, when you click on it, you basically get a Google Maps view of the location that you're going to be at. And at the top are a couple of sliders you can slide through, which you can turn on different settings. You can turn on sunrise, sunset, you can turn on moonrise, moonset. And the most important one is to turn on the Milky Way core so that you can see where the Milky Way will be positioned and the orientation of the Milky Way. This is very important. A lot of people don't realize is that the Milky Way changes orientation during the season. So it might rise um, in the east in the beginning of the season and by the end of the season coming October, it's you're only going to be shooting it in the west slowly setting on the horizon. So the time you can shoot certain shots might depend on the time of year when the Milky Way is in the right location. And what the planner will allow you to do is pick the optimal time for the Milky Way core to be in the right location for your composition that you've thought about. So once you've got the Milky Way setting turned on, you can go to the date that you've selected using the moon planner for when the optimal time is to go and shoot. And basically like Google Maps, you find your location, you scroll, scroll, okay, I'm camping out here in the middle of Cedarburg area. And you pin the location where you're going to roughly be shooting from. So this might be a bit of a challenge if it's an arch or something you can't really see. But to the best of your ability, try and find the location on Google Maps and then use it in the app to find the same spot so that you can get a rough idea of where you're going to be standing. Um, a good example of one I used this type of planning for was when I went to the amphitheater in the Drakensberg. I was able to plan and see when the Milky Way would be behind the Devil's Tooth and which was the best time of year for this. So once you've got your location and you drop that pin, make sure you have the um, setting on in the top slider. Um, you'll see over here, I'll be showing you. Select the one that shows the Milky Way core. Now this is where it gets a little bit confusing and once you've wrapped your head around how this works then it's pretty easy but initially it could look a little bit daunting. So what you're going to see when you turn on the Milky Way core are these little circles and the small little circles are kind of the orientation of the Milky Way but it's it's not the core bit the bright bit in the center of the Milky Way. The bigger dots as the dots get bigger represent the Milky Way core. So where you see the Milky, the big dots, that's the Milky Way core and the little dots are basically the tail or the, the wraparound of the rest of the core, but doesn't have those bright stars and that the Milky Way. Um, and you'll see on the screen now, if you slide left or right, you'll be changing the time at the bottom and you'll see the Milky Way core will move on the screen. So this will tell you at what time is optimal for the Milky Way to be in the right position that you want to shoot it. So this is how you plan. You look at where those bigger dots are rising out of the horizon and that you want to have behind your composition because you want to shoot your composition and then the Milky Way will be sitting behind it. As you move through the night, you might see that all the big dots, the Milky Way core rise into the sky because it's like a dome. That will mean that the Milky Way will be sitting nicely above your composition and you can do the panoramas. So when the big dots are up in the sky or at the top of the dome, that's great for panoramas. When the dots are started to rise out of the ground or at the edge of the dome, that will be those diagonal shots where the Milky Way is rising out of the horizon. Have a look at the example, play around with it, get a feel for it. This I think is the trickiest part of the planning and getting your head around and trying to understand how it works. So play around, look at different dates, look at the dots, slide through the time and just get a feel for the orientation of the Milky Way. And then this is great because I use this a lot to plan trips um, several months down the line and I can quickly see if I'm going to a new spot what the orientation of the Milky Way will be and if it'll work roughly for what I want to shoot. So that is the basic planning in advance. This is how you plan months in advance for a particular location. Then once you get to location, 
then it gets fun and the planning and you can really hone down the times and specifics of your planning. We found these really cool rock formations. Patrick's just showing us photo pools where the Milky Way potentially will be. I mean, these are the rock formations we're thinking of shooting. So this is looking good for about 1 a.m. and then we'll have the, the Milky Way sitting up above these, these rock formations. So very important for Milky Way and astrophotography, get to your location in daylight hours if you can and go and explore all, find all your compositions while the sun's still up. So when you're going to find your location, open the photo pools app. I find the accuracy, particularly if it's out in a remote region such as Cedarburg or out in the mountains is a little bit off. So you need to recalibrate. So if you touch on the night AR at the bottom um, of your panel, you will see that it will say calibrate. You're going to click on the calibrate button and then you're going to also calibrate with the sorry, self calibrate with the sun. So you're going to slide, move the little slider until the circle of the sun is over the actual sun that you see holding it up to the sky. You can do this with the moon as well but I find just doing it when you're in the daytime planning, um, calibrating with the sun is very accurate then at showing you where the Milky Way will be. You'll probably see if you go to the calibrate and you hold it up, it's slightly off. It's a little bit to the left or the right of the sun. And this is what I found with my own experience. And I just move that sun then onto the sun and hit calibrate. And now my photo pulls app is 100% accurate for the location that I am in. Then you're going to click on the night AR button at the bottom of the screen. And if you move your phone around, what you're going to see is the Milky Way core where it's going to be sitting. And if you slide left or right on the screen, it will move the time. So you can move it to 10 p.m. that night, 1 a.m. that morning. Um, and this will tell you exactly where the Milky Way will be sitting at what particular time. So what you do now is you go to your composition, you hold up the night AR on the app and you basically see where the Milky Way will be optimal for your composition. And then that will tell you what time the optimal time will be to shoot your composition. So if the Milky Way is sitting in the arch or above the rock formation that you're looking for, have a look at the time, move around, play with your composition, make sure you fine tune it, get it 100%. And once you've got your composition 100% with the night AR mode, you have a look at the time and you say, okay, this is at 9.35 is roughly the optimal time for this shot. So I need to be at about 9.20 set up and then take my photos. And then I move to the next location and I do exactly the same thing. So then I can plan throughout that night what I'm going to shoot at 9 p.m., 10 p.m., 11 p.m., 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m throughout the night and I can get five or six good compositions with the Milky Way in different orientations from rising off the horizon to maybe ending with a panorama um, over a particular tree or something that I found um, is a great way of planning. And this then also focuses you through the evening. You don't just take a thousand photos of the same composition and you get multiple images from it. So using the moon, um, for initial just uh, planning to tell you when the Milky Way is going to rise and set and if there's going to be a moon visible or not. It's very good. Then going into the planner and planning in advance before you get to location and then going into the night AR to plan your specific times and compositions when on location is the way that I use the app 99% of the time and is how I would recommend you start practicing and using the app. So I hope you found that useful and you're going to be shooting some great astrophotography and planning with the Photopulse app.